everyone i am dr rajita vanga so today's topic is on primitive streak so primitive streak uh, is a most important structure which appears uh, in the beginning of the third week of intrauterine life in the developing embryo so a primitive streak appearance itself uh, is a very significant event uh, which gives craniocaudal uh, orientation to the embryo so let us understand this structure little more in detail so here is the uh, sagittal section of the developing embryo where we can see it, a bilaminar structure is present by the end of second week the blue cells are the epiblast cells and yellow ones are the hypoblast cells and we are having yolk sac and above to the epiblast cells the cavity is called amniotic cavity and this connection of extra embryonic mesoderm with the cytotrophoblast is later turns to form connecting stalk so our topic is on primitive streak so at the beginning of the third week that is around on 14th or 15th day of gestation a longitudinal ridge appears in the midline uh, at the caudal to the dorsal aspect of bilaminar embryonic disc so the longitudinal ridge which appears is called as primitive streak and primitive streak is visible on the dorsal aspect of the embryonic disc and uh, towards the amniotic cavity means here towards the amniotic cavity it appears it is formed due to the pro proliferation of epiblast cells so the epiblast cells proliferate and move towards the midline forming the primitive streak and at the cranial end of the primitive streak later it gets thickened to form primitive node which is also called as primitive knot or hensens node so here we can see this is the primitive streak here is the primitive node and what we are seeing is the view from above uh, the, here is the amniotic cavity and the blue cells what you are seeing is the uh, epiblast cells and yellow ones are the hypoblast cells so primitive streak it is a highly pluripotent uh, structure contains highly pluripotent stem cells which keeps on dividing and because of the division of uh, cells first the primitive streak uh, replaces the uh, hypoblast cells and forms a definitive endoderm so first layer formed in because of primitive streak is the endoderm then further primitive streak grows in between the uh, ecto and endo to form the intraembryonic mesoderm and the epiblast cells now they are no more called epi epiblast they are also replaced by the primitive streak cells to form a definitive ectoderm so the gastrulation is an important event which happens because of the development of primitive streak and because of the uh, continuous division the cells which are forming they are uh, migrating towards the cranial end of the embryo or head end of the embryo so we know the primitive streak appears on the caudal side of the embryo so here we are seeing the primitive streak on the caudal side of the embryo so the other end will be the head end of the embryo or cranial end of the embryo and the cells divide and they grow towards the head end so the disc shaped structure will turn to form a pear shaped embryo suppose what happens if there is no enough gastrulation means uh, if the primitive streak if it disappears very early okay usually the primitive streak is a transient structure and we know it star it uh, it appears on the 15th or 14th day of development and it uh, stays up till 5th week of gestation so by the end of the 5th week of gestation the primitive streak usually disappears and if the primitive streak disappears little early earlier than 5th week so what happens there will be caudal dysgenesis this is the caudal agenesis or caudal dysgenesis where the lower part of the baby fails to develop properly this condition is like a mermaid condition called as serinomelia it is called as serinomelia so the gene which is responsible for that is called bone morphogenetic protein gene 
and uh, the, it is a member of uh, TGF family that serve as a signal of molecules for a number of morphogenetic events. So including dorsalization of CNS and uh, participating in bone, morphish, um, bone morph uh, formation. So caudal dysgenesis or serenomelia or mermaid syndrome is caused due to insufficiency of mesoderm by the primitive streak. And consequently, there are not enough cells to form the lower part of the body so that the legs are fused. So premature regression of primitive streak leads to the widespread loss of a trunk uh, and the lower limb mesoderm. So these are the symptoms we can remember as waiter, V is for vertebral defects, A for anal atresia, T for tracheoesophageal fistula and R for renal defects. And sometimes along with the renal defects, cardiovascular and limb defects may also get associated. So we can write as abbreviation vectoral. Vectoral includes V for vertebral defects, A for anal atresia and T, uh, C for cardiovascular defects, T for tracheoesophageal fistula and R for renal defects and L for limb defects. So these are the defects associated with serenomelia. Suppose if the primitive streak is persistent after fifth week, so it keeps on dividing. And we know the primitive streak forms all three germ layers. So this uh, primitive streak, if it is persistent, it results in too much of gastrulation leading to a condition called as sacrococcygeal teratomas. Sacrococcygeal teratoma occurs due to too much of gastrulation and this teratoma contains all three uh, germ layer derivatives like you may observe tooth or hair or muscles or glands. So various structures may be present. All three germ layers derivatives are seen in sacrococcygeal teratoma and surgical intervention is required uh, after the birth. So this is all about a small topic on primitive streak, when it appearance, appears and what are the parts of primitive streak and how it appears and what are the important changes it makes and suppose if it is disappears early what it happens and suppose if it is too much of gastrulation because of the persistence of primitive streak what it happens. So all this we learned in today's topic. Thank you. Bye.